Hey guys, this is Steve Rosati. I'm here at Bass Musician Magazine, and today I have the opportunity to come into New York Bass Works and hang out with Dave. Dave is the proprietor of New York Bass Works. He's been with the company, you've been, this is your company, you started this yep. from the ground up. Yep. Um, so Dave, tell me about where, where did you get the idea to start this company in the first place? Well, I was building bases for myself, um, just for my own purposes, and as I'm out there playing, people are going, um, hey, where'd you get the base? How come it has no name? You know, because I had no name on the, on the headstock. I said, well, I'd build them for myself. And people were going, um, I have a friend who's a bass player, blah, blah, blah. You might want to try it. I said, you know, I don't do this, you know, for a living. I play for right, a living. Right, right. But um, I'll see. You know, and I didn't have a shop. I used to use other people's shops. So um, eventually, a friend of a friend came over which was George Panos. He was my first, uh, very first customer, and he tried the bases out, and this was back in 96, 97. Wow. And I had the shop in construction at the time. The shop wasn't even complete yet. And he says, I want one of these. So I said, I guess, I guess I'm in business. That's amazing. So was that, how many strings was that to start with? Five. So your first base that you built was a five string? No, actually, no, first was four. I was building bases as far back as 97, ah, <gasps> uh, excuse me, 77 77. Yes. Wow. 97 is when, when I really started my company, but uh, 20 years before that. So that's, that's a really unique thing. I, I think, especially in the bass world, when we think of like guys, like we think of like Mike Tobias right. or Harvey Citron yep. or, or even like, uh, you know, with, with Tim, you know, passing away, but Tim was a guitar player. Right. You know, I knew Tim from college. Right. And Tim was a phenomenal guitar player. Well, but Harvey's also <clears throat> a guitar player He as is, well. and he's a great vocalist as yes. well. And, and Mike used to play bass and guitar. Mike Tobias. Tobias. I, I knew him more as a, as a guitar player. As a guitar player, but, but he played bass. But you're one of the few guys out there that's actually a bass player, which yes. I think is really <laughs> unique because you understand those elements uh, that a lot of us bass players go through with right. like hearing ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, finding that right instrument that just speaks to us. Mm -hmm. You know, so your experience. So when did you start playing bass? Um, I bought my first, well, my mother bought me a bass in 1972. That seems to be the, the story for a lot of guys. It was, it, was a, um, it was an AR, made in Japan, imitation of a Hofner, and I had no amp. And, and I said, Ma, now i got to buy an amp. <laughs> $60 bass. And she goes, I didn't know there had to be an amp. <laughs> I said, yeah, there has to be an amp. So uh, I went out to a pawn shop, and I bought an amp, and I built my own speaker. And soon enough, everybody's saying, what are, you, what are you doing with this thing? You need a fender. I said, isn't that part of a car? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I checked everything out. By 73, by 73, I bought my first Fender Precision bass, and, and then it went on from there. So 73, I bought my first bass. By 75, 76, I was playing professionally. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. And, yeah. and you're, you're really stationed in the, in the New York area. Yes. So, I mean, this has been, you've been here your whole life, right? Well, that was actually in Florida. I, oh. I actually became a musician. We moved to Fort Lauderdale in 19, uh, late, uh, actually, summer of 72. <laughs> was it 72 or, yeah, 72. And immediately down there, I just ended up hanging out with a bunch of guys who were in... Fort Lauderdale, you said. Fort so Lauderdale. That, that whole Jocko vibe, you know, oh, that's of course. Yeah. Fort Lauderdale. I mean, that seems to be uh, that, that transition from the Northeast to Florida yeah. seems to be there. Because Jocko was originally from Norristown. Yeah, Norristown, so and he moved in. The family moved down to Florida. Nobody yeah. could afford the North. Nobody wanted to live in the cold. Uh, fam musician, we were a musician family too. My mother wow. was a singer. My father's a songwriter. So, yeah, I, uh, I heard that. I heard yeah. pretty pretty famous too. Yeah. Like they they had a, you know did some amazing stuff. Yes, with the brand, That's the brand has really developed a lot over the mm -hmm. years. So I know like the deep jazzes. Yes, I've always been a big fan of the deep jazz and the Cremonas. I love the Cremona. Thank you. I remember the first time we met was actually at Gerald Veasley's That's bass right. boot camp, yeah. and I played that that bass that you had that fretless, the fretless. with the, with the ramp on it. And I remember like I fell in love with that oh, bass yeah. instantly. That one that bass just spoke to me. Thank you. That was I've never played a fretless as nice as yours. Oh man, Thank that you one was it, it just it was an amazing. It was it was like. You know, I love that bass. I, I, remember I know it's you, gone. You really quite, did. You really, yeah. Well, I kept coming back. Yeah, I leave I and I'd come back. I leave and come back, and it was just, it was just an amazing bass. So with, with those basses, because the, the, the design is so different. What was your inspiration for like the Cremona and the Deep Jazz? Um. Well, the Deep Jazz, the, the original design was the concert design, which is that one right, right there. Okay. Um. And. I had a customer who said he liked it, but it didn't sit on the lap well enough. Okay. So he said, how can we make this sit on the lap a little better? So mm -hmm. um, it was a pretty quick 
Behind it is the deep jazz. Okay. Um, so you, you can even see the horn development, you know, from there to there. And Absolutely. The horn on, on the deep jazz moves down a little bit. And there was a little more of an offset to the body, and it kind of became, from an original design, it went very jazz basish. Absolutely. And I had stopped making Fender instruments, Fender style instruments mm -hmm. at that point. I said, I'm doing only my own original designs. I'm not copying anybody. Mm -hmm. And um, it went that direction. And uh, he said, it looks kind of like a jazz bass. And that's I awesome. I said, yeah, well, that's my roots. I remember we were talking. You and I had a conversation recently yes. that we were talking about this. Because I said I was on the road. And I was like, you know, I, I had to take a bass with me that didn't fit the situation. And I was doing crazy Better stuff than, with it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we started talking about what inspired you and what kind of, there's a whole line of your instruments that have this inspiration behind them. Can you speak a little bit about that? Well, uh, when I first... When I first started playing bass, um, the first bass that I had was a P bass, like I told you, and mm -hmm. it was a very, very, it was probably the world's heaviest Fender Precision bass. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know any better when I was that age. I just said, oh, it looks nice. It was uh, Ash Body, Maple Neck, White Pick Guard, 73. And I, I remember picking up and going, well, I guess these are heavy instruments. I had no experience yet. Because the body was so heavy, it balanced perfectly because it was a ton of weight here. Absolutely. Um, the thing sounded good. It was a good sounding P bass, not like a, like a, a pre CBS, like a vintage um, Alder body, mm -hmm. with a fingerboard bass, but it had a really good, very forward sound, but it was heavy. It really was heavy. Mm -hmm. um, once I started exploring other basses, other fenders, I noticed that. Wow, how come they don't balance as well? Mm -hmm. Well, because they were normal weight. Right, bases. right. They were they were in the normal, uh, the in the normal weight range, and I love those bases. But um, I I always had a little problem. I'd be playing and I'd be going like this with mm -hmm. my shoulder. I probably still, you know, from those days have have little habits. <clears throat> but I would go like this, and I'd be pushing down my like body. And um, I figured out how to rebalance the body. That that's you know you know that is that's something that that tr all of us have dealt with at some point is that neck dive. But you it know. came it, it came from the uh, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, but please. It came from the, the the original Fender design at in its day. Mm -hmm. Still is one of the best balance bases out yeah. there. But I wanted it to be. I wanted more. Yes. You know um, I'm I'm not. A big guy, and you know, I, I don't have shoulders this big and arms. <laughs> yeah. Well, I my arms are a little long for me. I'm a little strangely built, but um, I wanted something that would feel more comfortable. Exactly, and well, not put stress on the shoulder because the gigs were long. Well, you know, one of the things I've discovered about playing one of your instruments is that I feel like the instrument kind of disappears while I'm playing it. And that's, I think that's a really important... Entirely t intentional. Exactly. So as, uh, and that's one of the things, like it was, we were, uh, that's why I kept coming back. <laughs> I would sit down and it's just, it just felt like home. When I sat down and played your bass, it was like I was able to get those ideas out without thinking about the bass. It was just there. It's kind of like, it's like some of the technology. It's like, it's not supposed to hinder the experience. Right. It just enhances and enables it. You know, I look at every instrument, um, the ergonomics of every instrument, saxophone, you know, it, you know, you got, you got a neck strap mm -hmm. here. If you get the strap just up to the right level, mm -hmm. you know, I played a little alto. I'm not a good player at was, all. It was a tiny alto? No, it was, <laughs> it was just a regular, <laughs> you know, but I played a little, you know, I, <laughs> anyway, um, I noticed that if you don't get the neck strap right, you, you see saxophone players who play like this, as soon as you got the neck strap up, and even if it's, I had a, I had a busher. Which ergonomics, is, right? Ergonomics. Ergonomics. It was a heavy horn for, a, for an alto. It was, it was an alto that weighed like a tenor because they were heavy brass, yeah. the busher altos. So when I got it uh, on the strap just right and you were able to relax, you mm -hmm. know, um, it was great. Same with the piano. It's all about the bench you're sitting on. Yeah. You know, you're sitting, if you sit on a, a bench at just the right height and your hands are correct, yep. every instrument is like that. And I said, well, the... The electric guitar and the electric bass, uh, subsequently, are instruments that were, um, I guess you would say, they don't come from the classical realm. They don't come from hundreds of years of people complaining about how the thing feels. Mm -hmm. They just made these these instruments and put them out there. Mm -hmm. It was it's a it's a young instrument, so um, not a lot was discussed about comfort. There, you know, there these are these weren't considered. Um, real instruments in their day, in That's the early true. days. So now, uh, now we're getting into over 60 years. I think we're, we're at the 60 year point, right? Oh no, we're over 60 yep, years yep. with the electric bass now. 
and people are starting to realize that this is a serious instrument in, in the real in the real music world. It's it's not just a fad instrument. It's not it's not a, a Johnny Come Lately thing. It's it's here to stay. Well, it's it's had and, and I think that's a great that's a great point. Mm -hmm. And you know, and and I, I I agree with you. I mean, I think that now we're seeing with the instruments changing, and we see them right. developing. We see them changing roles. You know, this instrument isn't relegated just to the bottom. It has the opportunity to really soar mm -hmm. and be supportive in a supportive or a lead role, mm -hmm. which is really a wonderful thing. And and you know, and that brings me back to some of the instruments that you're building because I I played a few of your six strings as well. Oh, you did. <clears throat> I did. I did oh, at the show, cool. and I've yeah. tried them out at other places. And you know, that really is. It, it, they they all sing. They all have their own voices, and which you know, which again brings up another point is that you know when I looked for your instruments out there, nobody was reselling them. <laughs> it was like it was very hard to find them. So it seems like it seems like everything is is custom, and when people kind of come to you, they kind of stick with it. Right. So what is the process like? If I were to order an instrument from you, mm -hmm. what what is what is the wait period? What is the, uh, like, in a gen generalized? It depends. If you're talking about a Cremona base, mm -hmm. a handmade Cremona um, custom, okay. um, it's usually about nine months to a year. Okay. From the time, um, from the time we have the design in place okay. until the time it's delivered. That, that fluctuates because I'm a one-man shop, as Absolutely. you know. Um, and the, the whole thing, we, we start to talk about tone first, mm -hmm. you know, what you're looking for tone-wise, you know, what, you're, what, what you want to hear, what you want to feel. And then from there we start talking about fingerboard width, scale length, radius of the board because we got to get this right for you. We got to get the hand right. And then as far as, and then then it's uh, you know the visual too. It's awesome. I love your instruments. Thank you know you. I I love mo I love all basses, but I you know one of the, your instruments definitely speak to me. There's something about them. I've and that's just I don't I don't own one. <laughs> I've just played them and they're very awesome. That, you know? I want to change we, that we at some point. That, yeah. And one of the things that I can say is that I you know coming across your instruments, they are unique. They have a they have a great sound, but they fit in any any situation. Uh, I, I can tell that you're a bass player just by that alone, which I really love. So <clears throat> to finish off the interview, just to kind of compile everything back together because I know we're going to have some some shots of the shop as well which is awesome because I yeah. we all want to see where things are made especially in a one man art it's you're not it's an artisan kind of kind of environment it really is. but if you could You'll sum see. up <laughs> if you could sum up if you could give me a takeaway from your experience as a builder as a musician how can you compile that into like like one phrase like what was what would be your your takeaway oh this is tough I know this is tough <laughs> um, what I what I built for myself, for my own personal need, and satisfied myself is what I wanted to do for others. You know, I, in, in a sense, when somebody says, oh, I'm really into the build process, sometimes local customers would come around and they would check the, process, the, the progress of the instrument. Um, it's like I'm their hands to, to build what they want, mm -hmm. to build what they need. Absolutely. You know, to, to get that same experience that I'm getting out of my instruments. I build what I want. And I still have my, you know, I have my techniques, I have my beliefs, my belief system in, in what a bass should be. Mm -hmm. But to be able to form that um, to the customer's needs, to, you know, to, I listen to what the customer is telling me. Listen. I won't build anything stupid. And there's a lot of, <laughs> I've had a lot of crazy, which I can't even talk about, some mm -hmm. silly stuff that people have asked me to do. I won't do that. Mm -hmm. But um, I will stretch very far to get into the hands of what a player wants. That's amazing. Thank you. I, you know, David, thank you so much. You're welcome. Sir. Thanks for having me up to your shop. Thank you so Pleasure. much. And guys, what we're going to do is we're going to have some of the shop so that you can see where these instruments are created and, and the development and time that goes into this. Thanks for watching and more to come. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, now we're in the shop. This is where it all happens, huh? There so, <laughs> so I can see why you do it by yourself. <laughs> it's uh, you, you definitely a space is a it, just like New York City. It's a commodity, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. um, so, I see. I see you have some builds going on. Mm -hmm. um, I see there's there's one maple board over there. And let me tell you, you know what? I was I've always been a uh, ebony man. Like I always loved ebony because of the upright. Right. Recently, I started liking maple. For some reason, maple fingerboards have just like turn, made a turn on me lately, and that, I, I, there's just something about it that I've really enjoyed. Is it the, the visual <clears> or the, the... I like them with flat wounds. With flat wounds. There's something about the maple with the flat wound. It just like, okay. it, it evens it out for some reason, which I really like. It makes a little sense. <clears throat> and it's, it's, really, yeah. it's really amazing. So, um, 
Okay. So <clears throat> would you want to show me, like, oh, I see you have, like... Well, this is really important. This is this is the boiler. Okay, yes. Oh, look at that, you this know. This is the boiler. Um, you know, this, this is what keeps the whole house warm. <laughs> uh, can't have the hot water heater. Right <laughs> oh, look at that. <clears throat> all right, I'll show you. I'll show you. Th first of all, that the drill press all the way in the back there. Okay. That's, um, I restored this when I first built the shop. Here, I'll put a, some light. And this is a 1952 wow. Delta Milwaukee. Proudly built in the USA. Wow, that that's and, serious, um, huh? Yeah, I put the extension table. That's my all purpose. I, what I do all my drilling on woodworking drilling, um, belt sander, thickness sander. Nice. Everything had to be small. Um, I had to get a, a small thickness sander mm -hmm. because there's just no room. I had to have a full size table saw because I like the power and feel of Absolutely. a real saw. So I see there's some there's some work going on on the top. Yes. Uh, well, no, that's that's just junk up there that's okay the stuff that's laying around the shop i had nowhere to put but okay these oh. are these are actually projects in in process oh wow i could show you some of these yeah this please is, uh, this is a cremona oh this is a cremona nice. six in process with a beautiful bird's eye top wow that is that is yeah. beautiful i love that and that's a center joint <clears throat> um that's a book match i know it's hard to see where the book match line is but that's what i try to i try to do um, also, so, a two-piece alder body. Yeah, no, we, we're running short on time, yes. and I just want to make sure that you know we got to see the shop, and we see sure. it's 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 you know it's amazing. You know, it's amazing where where designs come from, and you know we have these these illustrious ideas of things being in big you know castle type oh, no. places, but really, you know, it comes <laughs> it, it comes in these amazing little places where there's Reynolds Wrap on the yeah. floor. You know, probably <laughs> sponsored by Reynolds Wrap, right. but uh, but. It's it, you know necessity is the mother of invention. Right. I think we can say that about sure. about about you and and your design and and where you're going from here. Absolutely. And I'm really I know there's stuff on the on the horizon that looks amazing. You know I've heard I've heard from a source that there's some stuff coming, and I'm sure excited. I'm just as excited as everybody else to see what happens. Thank you for having me to your shop. Thank, Thank you for you having Steve. me into your house. Um, Pleasure. It was really a for wonderful experience. Years, yeah, I made it up. <laughs> but but thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, guys.